The materials for the sled are going to be uh, made up of what you see here. And like I said, this is all stuff I already had in the workshop. This is a small piece of uh, yellow tongue structural flooring. Now being structural, this stuff is much denser than normal chipboard. And you can tell that just by the weight in that very small piece. So that should make a good base for the sled. Oh, for the runners, what I'm using for the runners is this stuff here. I've already cut them. But this is just that plastic um, plastic chopping board that you get for the kitchen. Makes great runners and the depth of that is just the perfect um, depth for the table saw. And these don't suffer from uh, expansion and contraction due to humidity when the humidity is changing. So they'll be, uh, they'll be the runners. Put that on top of there. The backing board is gonna be this piece of melamine. This is a leftover shelf from my wall unit over there. Um, some of you would have seen me using this when I made the tanning jig for the, sorry, the mortising jig for the router. These edges on this board are the factory edges. So I measured them and I found which one was a perfect square and I've marked it there. And that one there's a perfect square. And I verified that as well by, I'll just move that out of the way, by putting it up against an edge that I know is straight. Marking a line on the table, and then by flipping that over and lining it up with that line, it lines up perfectly. So I know that that corner there is a square. So we'll mount the base onto those runners. I'll cut this backing board down to a square, so probably across there, and then maybe take the bottom of it off. And that's going to sit on the base, something like that. And then in the front here, I've got this very thin strip of aluminium. I think it's one millimeter. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty close to one millimeter. Cut that in half. I'm gonna insert two strips here. They'll be recessed into the board. And along the edge of that backing board, I'm gonna have this, uh, again, this is one millimeter aluminium angle. Have a piece sitting there and a piece sitting there. I'll mount all, I'll cut these pieces roughly mount them onto the um, onto the board and then after they're all after they're all in place then I'll cut the kerf through the um, through the sled that way I'll get that uh, zero clearance that I'm hoping for I'll just mark some holes now to drill into this backing board. I'll pre-drill them and then screw it down to the base. So the kerf's roughly gonna come through the middle here. So I don't think these screws are critical. As long as they're not in the way of anything. So I just wanna make sure that these screws aren't going into the um, the runners, where the runners are. Which, uh, this one here, I might have to move that one. I'll move that one over to here. And I might move that one slightly over to here. And one more for good measure. and countersunk them. The reason why I've countersunk the bottom is when you're screwing into a piece of timber, as that screw drives itself into the timber, it tends to grab some of that material and pull it up. And if that material's got nowhere to go, what can happen is it can cause a gap between your two pieces of um, board that you're trying to screw together. So by giving that material a little bit of a relief, that way you eliminate any gaps and that will sit dead flat. Okay, so I'll just use my uh, speed square to line this up now. When mounting this backing board, we want to try and get these edges as close as we can to 45 degrees to the blade, but that's not critical. What is critical is that this angle here is 90 degrees, and I'll explain that later. But the way I'm going to get this as close as I can 
to 45 is just by using my speed square against the fence. Make sure that fence is locked in place. And drilling one screw for starters. Okay, let's check that. I've moved the position of the backing board slightly because um, the original position was up there and it was about four inches from the end. But that four inches, that's the length of di the diagonal cut, which uh, is longer than the width of the board. So really I was probably restricted to about a piece of timber of three and a half inches wide. And just in case I wanted to do anything wider than that, um, I wouldn't be able to, it would hang over the edge. So I've just repositioned that, moved it down, it's now six inches from the uh, edge of the sled. Before I go any further with the sled, I'm going to attach the runners to the underside. So I'll, I'll drill and countersink four holes in each, and that way we can screw them to the base of the sled. Okay, so I've got a, the center line of my backing board mark there. If I use that to line this up with the center of the table saw blade, yep, that's about right. So I use that position of that fence to um, line this up on the on the runner. So I'll get that out of the way for the moment. I just elevate these runners with these strips of aluminium just to get the runners slightly above the, the top of the uh, table and I'm going to apply a little bit of um, construction adhesive we'll just sit the sled on top of those and let it and let that dry up overnight make sure I keep that against the fence So I've let the um, runners on the sled glue up overnight and all we'll do now is just whack some screws into them, make them a bit more permanent. And then after that what I'll do is I'll actually move this backing board into its correct position. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you realised when I screwed this back in place that um, I actually put it in the wrong spot. <laughs> so it's got to be moved back. No harm done, it's not glued in, so it's an easy fix.
Okay, so the sled's got all the aluminium inserts fixed to it now. So really all that's left to do is to cut the kerf, which I'll do right now. Well, the sled's pretty much finished now. Um, all that's left to do is give it a test run. So what I'll do is I'll use a couple of pieces of this architrave that I've got lying around and I'll cut a mitre on this piece here on this end and one on this end and uh, bring them together as a joint. Earlier on in the video I did say that it wasn't critical that you got these fences uh, exactly 45 to the blade although you do want to um, get as close as you can to that if not dead on. But what, uh, what is important is that uh, this angle here is an exact 90 degrees and regardless of any little variance you've got this way as long as you cut one piece on this side and the other and the mating piece on the other side that angle will always add up to 90 degrees so we'll give it a test run and see how it goes yep that's a perfect 90 degrees and when you're making a full frame, the idea is, as I said, you cut this piece on this side and its mating piece on the other side. And then you would rotate this piece around to here. And if you can imagine, this is the third piece that's going to join that. You would cut that miter on this side, cut this miter on this side, and just keep going around that way. And uh, if you do that, then you'll end up with perfect 90 degree angles.